I'm so impressed to see you means lively here because every day I'll follow you either on TV or YouTube. So it's uh, very honored, sir. So my question is regarding this uh, new national education policy, NEP. So here uh, we are talking about outcome-based education and all those things. Previously also we had some education policies now. So how is this uh, NEP going to affect uh, this outcome-based education in this new scenario, sir? So we as a college or teachers as a student. So what is actually expected from us, sir, from this NEP that I want to know, sir? No, Thank you. First, I would request educators in particular to go through it very carefully. No, all policies in a country as because India are trying to say everything to everybody. So don't bother too much about that trying to say, but the kernel of it, the essence of it, follow. You take higher education, there are three or four things long overdue they introduced, at least in the policy. 160 years ago or thereabout, a man called Charles Eliot, the then president of Harvard, he introduced the elective system in the US. It took us 160 years and this policy to talk about electives for the first time. There's nothing new. Long ago, somebody had done it. There's no sensible country on earth where there's no elective system. What's the difficulty in introducing? Two, an evaluation that is radically altered. I already mentioned it. Three, our universities have become undergraduate degree and examination management institutions. They're not universities at all, they're a joke. They said large colleges, autonomous, universities not burdened with managing the colleges, undergraduate education, etc. They're about giving overall leadership and direction to education and research, research, research. The next point, technology education interface with industry and society apprenticeships and, and serious, not casual, flippant, you know, just only for, to fulfill the requirements. But serious engagement with industry and economic activities so that you learn, you challenge, you are challenged, you find answers, you learn through that experience, so on and so forth. So there's nothing spectacular. But together, if you do it right, it will radically change it because the basic premise is that we want to do better. School education, simple thing, consolidation of schools. Instead of pretending that four kids constitute a school of five classroom, five classes and one teacher. The teacher doesn't go, the kids don't bother and everything is a namesake. And the moment you say you consolidate, newspapers scream with headlines saying the schools are being closed. There's nothing more dishonest and insincere than this nonsense. A cluster approach where a, a 10 plus 2, a high school or 10 plus 2 that uh, um, intermediate institution becomes the leader of all the primary school and secondary schools in that area so that you can share resources, both human and uh, material, including computers, etc. Then utilizing, luckily now we have so many open source softwares like KhanAcademy.org, etc. And technology now can reach more and more people, digitization, so on and so forth. So to the extent possible, make the teacher a facilitator rather than a fellow simply who, who keeps shouting from the desk. Each kid is different. Your principal, I think, or your uh, dean mentioned that. Each kid is different, particularly at school level. Not every kid is the same level. Some kids grasp quickly, some others too slowly. So allow them to learn at their own pace using technology. But teacher is a facilitator, understands each kid's needs and creates a framework. And with 3D thing and with the audiovisual thing, so that concepts actually are understood. Even today, I am deeply disappointed that Sometimes even teachers don't understand concepts. I remember in one of the best schools in Hyderabad, when my daughter came home, I was a very bad father. I never paid attention. So whenever I had time, I only used to ask, even today they are joke, if you had any minutes time, you wouldn't ask her a few mathematics questions. So I asked her, what are you doing in math? My daughter said, highest common factor. So I gave her a few simple questions. She committed the same error each time. Then I understood. She, the teacher taught her, not highest common factor, but highest common prime factor. Right? 28, 42, etc. This is a common error. So I understood the problem. So I wrote a small note saying that what's the difference between highest common prime factor, highest common factor. I wrote a note to the teacher next day, sent back a reply saying, sorry sir, my mistake. 
Another day, I remember again around the same time, I asked another question. So, perimeter. I asked my daughter, how, how did the teacher teach you? The teacher taught her saying that you, you convert it into unit squares, seven by four, let us say, unit squares, and then count the squares in the periphery. Do you see the fallacy? What happens? You count the seven there, you count the seven there, you don't count the four there because you already counted one, already counted one. You count the two here, you count the two here. Consistent mistake. Again, I explained to the teacher, I explained to my child, of course, you imagine an ant is going round, how long it will take. She grasped it in 30 seconds. I wrote a note and the teacher sent back a note saying that my, my. she is a fine teacher, well-meaning, caring, but her constitutional understanding was weak. If that is the case in one of the best schools, imagine what's happening to our kids in this country, where most teachers don't care, they get a salary, they think they have a kismet hai. <laughs> so, you know, that is not education. These can be changed easily, particularly with technology. A bit of an effort. There are so many people doing work. I myself am helping people doing outstanding work and I am now working very hard to try and replicate this at a mass scale. My dream is to reach not a million or two million kids which we are already reaching, but maybe 100 million kids, 200 million kids, because technology gives you that fin fantastic opportunity to magnify. So, it's not genius, simple, elegant things, and technology comes to our aid. Trust me, because the country is ready. And those of us who care must do it systematically. A lot of painstakes, suppose I want to create evaluation mechanisms, testing. So, painstakingly create those tests, testing modules, so that the child can understand where, the, where she is and then what are the lecturers. If the lecturers are there, then enable them for remediation. You don't have to do original work, already somebody has done. Just point out to that. So, we are in a good place as a country and the world. We could not have done these things this easily 30, 20 years ago. So, if you understand the problem, if you really care for the solution, now is the time to change.